Now look, while it's fun to review sports cars and all that sort of stuff, it's sometimes good to touch base with reality. That's why I've got this. This is the base model Volkswagen Tiguan. Specifically, this is the Volkswagen Tiguan 110 TSI Life. So it is the entry level Tiguan. And I'm here to find out if this base model is worth spending your money on, or should you go and get something that's not European? Now, what do I mean by something non-European? Well, I'm talking about the competitors of this car, which include the Toyota RAV4, the Hyundai Tucson, and the Mazda CX-5. Now you're getting just over 600 liters of boot space back here which is very practical and what i also really like about this car is that your seats fold in a 40 20 40 split which means that it's really easy to have four passengers and then fold the seat down to make more room now you can fold these seats using these tabs here and that will reveal over 1400 liters of boot space below here we do have a spare tire as well which is good to see and we do have some little storage pockets here on either side now here in the second row there is a ton of space thanks to lots of vertical room and there's actually plenty of leg room which you can see here and yeah it's very comfortable back here as well especially for a base model suv and we do have tri-zone climate control so you can control your own temperatures in the back we have a single usb-c port and we have a 12 volt socket in the back and our little air vents here now of course you can't forget the little center armrest here with some cup holders in the middle but they're not massive so it's not going to be the best thing for all types of water bottles but what you do have are some pretty large door bins with some felt in them so anything that in there isn't going to make a huge racket which is quite nice and you also get these little seat pockets which means there's plenty of place to store items and talking about storage here on the roof we have these giant sort of plastic containers which contain some little rubber in them and also places to store small items so you can put sunglasses or you can even put like small little cables in here i don't know what you're using this for to be honest but it is pretty interesting that volkswagen have included this as a storage solution now up here in the front you are getting some pretty cool trim it's not just any old plastic it's sort of got this fake weave pattern through it which i like quite a lot then jumping in you do have these cloth seats up front as well as in the back and i do like the pattern on them it's quite nice but they are manually adjustable jumping in what's really cool about this car is you get a digital display here and you also get a touchscreen here with wireless Apple CarPlay, which is really quite useful. I really like the start engine stop button. That looks like something that's ripped straight out of Audi, which is quite cool. You can just start it like that and everything comes alive. Now, this center screen here is very useful and there's plenty of customization that you can do here for your car, but mainly it's just used as a screen for Apple CarPlay for me. I'm rarely outside of Apple CarPlay using any other functions unless I need to jump into settings. And this driver's display is really quite cool to see on a base model. It's really easy to read, has plenty of customization, and it just makes this car feel so much more upmarket. I also love how you've got the little indicators for your fuel and your engine temperature flanking this screen green and it just feels very upmarket for a car in this segment. Now you have a pretty normal glove box here but I do appreciate how it's pushed right up to the front so this passenger has plenty of leg room and also you can adjust how much air conditioning flows into here if you want to keep any sort of drinks cool or warm. You've also got storage solutions up here on the dashboard down by my knee here and you've also got very large door bins and also these cup holders are very big in the middle here too. Remove any sort of paraphernalia in the middle and you can push these buttons to secure any smaller drinks but then it is very useful for large water bottles just to be able to put them in the middle here and then this little, little glove box is fine it's pretty small but i do like this little rubber area down here next to your two usb-c ports and your 12 volt socket which is a good place to put your phone and some of you might be happy to see that this car does not have those haptic buttons some of those older volkswagen models have here we have actual physical buttons which are very easy to use and operate so for the money so far you have plenty of space plenty of features and it's a really comfortable car but let's talk about servicing and warranty now this car comes with a five-year unlimited kilometer warranty which is pretty standard but what isn't standard is how expensive this thing is to service so total servicing costs according to volkswagen's own website will cost you three thousand five hundred and sixty one dollars over five services service intervals are every 12 months or every fifteen thousand kilometers whichever comes first and i just noted that there was a very expensive service at the fourth year service which costs well over a thousand dollars for a car that's not even five years old which yeah it is 
is on the more expensive side to keep this thing running. It's also worth noting that this car scores a 3.6 out of 5 on productreview.com.au, which is an okay rating, and it's hard to ignore that this car has some reliability issues according to owners who've bought and live with this thing. And it's even outside of productreview.com.au where people are complaining about the Volkswagen Tiguan having a few issues. So I'm hoping that Volkswagen is addressing these actively because it is something that you can't really ignore. But a 3.6 out of 5 is still a pretty decent rating and most people do enjoy their Tiguans but there are some notable examples of these going a little bit wrong. And finally let's talk about safety. This thing scores a 5 out of 5 on Australia's ANCAP safety rating system which is a good thing so it makes for a good family car. But let's see how this thing drives considering this has the least powerful motor you can get in the Volkswagen Tiguan range. And so when you buy the base model Volkswagen Tiguan you kind of expect this thing isn't going to have a ton of power and you'd be right it only has a 1.4 litre turbocharged petrol four-cylinder engine underneath the bonnet and it's only front wheel drive so it's not terribly powerful and you have to put your foot down to overtake things like cyclists and look it's okay it's got a good amount of power it does have a turbocharger so there's a good thing compared to other cars that don't around this price point and it does feel like a pretty solid engine but that's thanks to the fact it's made it to this six-speed dual clutch transmission and I've actually found the whole system be very smooth I've really enjoyed driving this thing it feels really solid in here as well everything's like really well put together so it doesn't rattle and squeak and there's also plenty of tire wall meat which means that this thing rides really comfortably as well so I'm really impressed with the whole package here it really does feel like an affordable European SUV rather than feeling like something that's a lot cheaper so I'm really impressed with this whole package right here especially with all the technology you're getting I really do like the steering wheel feel it's nice and chunky and it has a good premium feel to it and it also does have a nice amount of responsiveness but yeah it's pretty numb this this thing is a very bog standard day-to-day -day driving machine and that's not a bad thing at all this thing is very comfortable to cruise around in and you know going through tight corners you do feel plenty of body roll and that engine does need to be you know encouraged to rev up a little bit to deliver a bit more power but that's not necessarily a bad thing because you're not getting the most expensive engine right here so I've been averaging around 7.8 liters per hundred k's in here which isn't too bad at all so yeah what this really is 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 just a comfortable family SUV. It's not a driving machine, even though it does have these paddles here, and it does have a sport mode for the gearbox as well to really encourage it to get going. But even for people who've never had experience behind the seat of a more powerful car than this, will appreciate that this isn't the most rapid driving machine. Now, it is pretty compliant through corners. I do like that a lot. And to be honest, this is one of the better driving SUVs you can buy at this price point. I really did like the Mazda CX-5, and I thought that was quite good. But then, yeah, the Hyundai Tucson was just a bit the same in the way of just being a big family SUV, and it's just comfortable to cruise around in, but it's not designed to be super exciting to drive. And so I think the Volkswagen Tiguan as a base model offers a lot of value for money but I would like to see Volkswagen address some of those reliability issues that some owners have had and also reduce the price of that cap price servicing because it is on the high side apart from that I think this is a brilliant little SUV and definitely worth considering if you're after a European small SUV like this